So how do you set that up in the global context? You know, it's a global economy, global companies. What do they need to do differently or, or do they just do it the same way? How do they? Sure, well, the innovation in a global context is a really interesting conversation. The thing about innovation is it's uh, widely distributed. Nobody has a m monopoly on innovation. Uh, no one company, no one country, no one industry has a monopoly on all good ideas. So if you accept that innovation and smart ideas are distributed and distributed globally, then the way you think about global markets is you think about them as a source of innovation and a source of new opportunity. I work with a lot of companies who describe themselves as global companies. Yes. But in reality, and that includes a lot of the companies in Silicon Valley, right. some of the biggest names in Silicon Valley. Yes. They describe themselves as global, but what they really mean is they're selling globally. Right. But when you look at where their innovation is concentrated, it's concentrated in Silicon Valley. So a truly global company will have a distributed, network of innovation. They will have innovation going on in different parts of the world. They will choose those specific innovation locations because those locations give the organization access to mm -hmm. the most relevant innovation. And each of those nodes in the network will be specialized. Mm -hmm. So you, if, you think about, if you think about building a big power transmission grid which is a solution made by a company called ABB. That particular solution is made up of power transformers, electrical transformers, uh, and a range of other different components that go into the overall solution. And what ABB has done is they've specialized the innovation in each of those components into a different part of the world where they can gain access to a customer, where they can gain access mm -hmm. to technology, where they can gain access to something they need to make the best solution. But the uniqueness of that network is each of those nodes is specialized mm -hmm. and they come together in the best solution for the market. So it's specialized, distributed, and it's aimed at tapping into the innovation wherever it lies in the globe. How does this relate to what I've seen your research on what you call multi-domestic versus global market structures? Sure. Well, again, w when you're looking at market opportunity globally, uh, you really have a choice about how you go and search for opportunity. So there's innovation in how you search for opportunity. Mm -hmm. Historically, what a lot of companies done, have done is they've divided the market up geographically. Uh, this is quite common again in global businesses. We have North America, we have Latin America, we have Asia Pacific, we have Europe and Middle East and uh, managers have divided the world up into regions. Mm -hmm. But if you ask the question of what's unique about customer needs, what's common about customer needs across those regions, very often what you can find is something called a global business segment. One of the companies that's really good at this is uh, now the world's largest appliance manufacturer, which is Electrolux, a Swedish company. And it was transformed in the late 80s, early 90s by a couple of new owners. And they transformed the business by asking a very simple question. Let's ignore geography. Let's just look for similarities in customer needs across geographies. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, they found a group of customers who wanted a washing machine that imitated the natural hand washing motion uh, of, of, that you'll often find in, in some countries around the world. And it turned out those customers were in Africa, they were in China, they were in Latin America. So in reality, because we had carved the world up into regions expecting to find differences, we were not able to see these similarities until we put aside the geographic differences and started looking for these similarities. Those similarities give us economies of scale. Mm -hmm. We can make one product that we can sell around the world. It makes the marketing easier. We don't have to change the marketing. We don't have to change the product. And so we can get economies of scale in all aspects of the business model. Mm -hmm. 
A multi-domestic market structure says no, every country is unique and I have to change to suit the needs of that country. Mm -hmm. In that world, what you need is knowledge of the local market. But if you're looking at a global business segment, the key core competency is knowledge of the segment, not necessarily knowledge of an individual country. So again, you can see innovation in how people think about the global opportunity. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's been able to find a global business segment, then very often they can gain advantages that, that will make it very difficult for a multi-domestic competitor to survive. I believe that particularly in global, mm -hmm. most companies are on a, a journey mm -hmm. uh, where they start with limited exports and then they distribute their value chain and then they build a truly globally distributed network. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just realizing what that journey is and anticipating the next phase of the journey. And that's the nature of innovation in general. If you look at who gets to maintain the lead, it's nearly always the firm that is anticipating mm -hmm. the next iteration of their business. Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll see a company like Sony that once iterated, but then forgot to iterate again. Mm -hmm. So it went from uh, Minnow in consumer electronics to the dominant player, but then did not have the next iteration of its innovation strategy mm -hmm. ready to go. And you compare that with somebody like Amazon, who is constantly reiterating the next focus of its business. And you'll see that the whole definition of the core business is fundamentally evolving as they learn more and more about what those opportunities are. So they're not reacting, they're actually anticipating. Mm -hmm. And they're thinking many years in advance, not next quarter.